are games, the staple of childhood for a lot of us. And even until adulthood, there are still quite a lot of people playing games, whether it's for leisure or perhaps even for professional sport. Whether you play games or not, it's definitely true that games do play a crucial part to the world. In fact, even when looking at the global market of gaming, gaming revenues are protected to grow beyond $212 billion by 2026, with a 16% increase from 2022. So then with all these games in front of us, what is happening to our brains as we consume it all? Some say we're getting dumber, but is that really true? Or is that just unsupported claims? In this video, I'll go through what gaming does to your brain exactly and understand whether or not it truly is affecting you negatively. But if you are a lover of games, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, and subscribe to this channel so I can continue to help you mine the gold in mind. So despite the news trying to blame so many bad things on games themselves, inherently playing games is not that detrimental as we think, or at least not as much as compared to when I was growing up. In fact, researchers have found significant increases in brain matter among gamers, particularly in regions responsible for brain plasticity. What this means is that those who play games, especially those like role-playing games, where you go out to discover new worlds, new environments, and everything else, have enhanced abilities to absorb new information. Gamers have also been shown to have improved potential control and reward processing, which is not surprising as the very nature of playing games and the feedback loops built into most games taps into the dopamine hit of our reward system. Now, a lot of us are taught that games are bad for you. I was one of them. But some research says the contrary. In fact, there are supporting studies that show that video gaming may actually be better for cognitive performance in children. Skills such as hand-eye coordination and focus are notably enhanced, especially when it comes to playing action and strategy games. In some data from the Adolescent Brain Cognitive Development Study, researchers found that children who played video games for three or more hours per day performed better on cognitive skill tests involving impulse control and working memory compared to children who never played games at all. If you think this study is just one-off, it was further supported by the National Institute on Drug Abuse and other entities of the National Institutes of Health. As the National Institute on Drug Abuse director, Nora Volko, MD states, numerous studies have linked video gaming to behavior and mental health problems. This study suggests that there may be cognitive benefits associated with this popular pastime, which are worthy of further investigation. So looking back at the earlier study and looking at the functional MRI scans taking out those children who played three or more hours of games compared to those who didn't, they found that the group of kids that played the games had greater activity in attention and memory. They also had greater activity in the frontal brain regions associated with more cognitive demanding tasks. But of course, that's not to say that all games are great for you. There are many types of games out there that even just playing a specific type could probably not be the best for your brain and others may actually help. For example, action games or third person shooters like Fortnite can be helpful to cognitive perception, spatial information, and attention. Yet with puzzle games such as Tetris or Starcraft, these tap into other areas of your cognitive ability. Since they revolve around problem solving, suggested that these type of games improve problem solving ability, strategic thinking, and planning. So this video up till now may be sounding like, well, games are amazing for me, so I'll just keep playing games. That's not necessarily the case though. While there are definitely cognitive benefits, one thing to take note of is that these benefits and the extent in which they can be beneficial for your brain depends on your age, how long you spend playing the game, and as mentioned earlier, the type of game you play. Most of the studies done examined younger children, and it is believed that a majority of the cognitive improvements from gaming can be seen the younger you are. So, if you're an adult playing games regularly and for long periods, you may need to rethink what you're doing. While playing games that benefit your brain do help with larger changes when you're young, simply binging a game may do more harm for you than good. And beyond just the way it affects your brain, it's the matter of addiction that really is something worth noting. In fact, in 2019, the World Health Organization officially recognized video game addiction as a mental health disorder. Gaming addiction in itself is estimated to affect up between 1.7% and 10% of the US. And being stuck to games can mess with your whole dopamine addiction as well, as you're constantly seeing the next high of winning a virtual prize with every new achievement you unlock from said game. These chemical reactions happening in small doses is no different from substance abuse or gambling. And so it's no wonder your brain is getting addicted. And so with addiction being such a serious issue, especially when it comes to your addiction to technology, it's worth noting that this can affect your brains and behaviors long term and your inability to delay gratification, which is a serious issue to achieving success. So if you're interested to learn more about these dopamine hits and why being addicted to dopamine is actually quite dangerous for you, make sure to subscribe to this channel, check out the next video, and let me continue to feed you nuggets of gold to boost brain and behavior.